Welcome back inside the No Morning Show, 25 minutes after 7 o'clock. So happy to have you here with us. It's the Lenten season. Tash, we're giving up for Lent. Hmm. You know. Bad behavior. I mean, <laughs> I don't behave badly by any means. <laughs> Most times, except the carnival. He is a red woman. Right. There's one person who can confirm that, a uh, birthday boy. But we'll oh, leave, him Jesus, no, <laughs> leave him alone because today is his birthday. No, we we'll leave him alone because today is his birthday. But um, <laughs> one of the things I'm trying to give up for Lent, Ashley, is negative self-talk. Ah, that's that is what we're talking about. Yeah. How about you, best. Kimberly? Nothing, I'm good. Nice. But how about you? <laughs> I aspire to be short like Kimberly. And, short and sweet. I aspire to be like Kimberly. <laughs> Rob, well, what's your role I think we're ready for the next interview. Very nice. I love it. I... So, <laughs> as we talk about Lent, remember that some of us are going to be abstaining from meat and meat byproducts. <laughs> of course, this is a Lenten tradition observed by many. But what nutritional alternatives are there for those who can't afford or are even allergic to fish? And what are the effects on the body of this 40-day lifestyle change? And so this morning, we're going to be talking to health system specialist, Dr. Agatha Carrington, about some of the options for those who want to refrain from meat. Dr. Carrington, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on now. Pleasant morning. Um, pleasant morning to you. Pleasant morning to Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, um, and welcome back and thank the... you so much for joining us. Yes, we've come back from the, the hectic um, carnival season and, mm -hmm. and most of us would know mm -hmm. that um, following, following that period, we have uh, a sort of a period between carnival and Easter. Um, where, where, where in the Christian community, this period of Lent um, is a period in which um, not just the Christian community, but others, they um, engage in some kind of abstinence. Most of the times, you'll have persons doing prayer, fasting, and a, a big issue there is, is abstaining from meats. Mm -hmm. um, as you would know, meats are high in protein, and therefore you would want to have some options that you can explore because you want to ensure that you have your dietary intake is, is intact. And so I want to just share a few things with you this morning, because I think it's important that um, we, we look at that. So if you aren't having meats, you would want to have some protein still. And therefore, um, for us, and, and this is not a bias, because I, I don't eat meat, but um, I have eaten meat in my earlier life. But just to say that you can have other options. So you can have some combinations. So we can have um, peas and rice. So we have various um, peas and beans that we could have. So you can have rice and black eyed peas, rice and pigeon peas, um, rice and split peas, or mm -hmm. whatever. Either you combine them, or some of us will use um, the peas separate from the rice as a, as a staple. I just right. wanted to, to mention that at first. We do have quite a lot of options that we can use to, to ensure that we have a combination of proteins in a meal. Now, Let me just Dr. say Carrington, as well. Dr. Carrington, no, I, I understand that you're trying to ensure that we have the good caloric intake, and that's fine. But let's talk about taste and variety, because so far I'm hearing peas and rice, peas and rice. Uh, maybe you well, may get to the, the, the point of provision as well. But what about that that meat, but not, not necessarily land animals? But let's talk about fish or tuna. I mean, are these also yeah, options I'm, as well I'm to get that protein? Tell you about those. Those, um, those, those combinations that you can use. So that is a staple, but you can right. also have the, the, those, those um, persons who are uh, 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 what you can call partial vegetarians. They use fish as well. And so you can have the fish for those persons who are not, not um, who want to do so. So your meal is not just the rice, the peas, and that. There are other things right. you can have as well. Your salads, your veggie salads. Yes. So you try to have your, your, your fresh salads as part of your meal. So you have the lettuce, the, 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 the cucumber, string beans, tomatoes, and, and the like. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to which, you can have vegetables again, your steamed vegetables, um, mm -hmm. and we use fresh herbs, and so you do get some taste. Right. Um, so it's not that your food is going to be tasteless. Your food will have, will have taste. Um, in terms of your soups as well, you can have veggie soups, and most of us will use... Um, um, corn soups, or mm -hmm. um, if not corn soups, you use split piece soups and so on. And you flavor them with your fresh herbs and yeah. could be quite, quite tasty and nutritious. Um, can a we, big can area, we also talk about the, the, um, the stuff that we grow here? Can we talk about the cassavas, the green figs, the, yes. the potato, that sort of thing? 
Uh, okay, so I'm coming to that because you, you wouldn't always use rice because you can use right. the ground provisions as, as a replacement for that with your peas and so on. So you use ground provisions as well because persons, some persons do not, do not like to have um, so much rice in their meal so that you will have, you look at that um, as well in terms of your, your, your intake. Um, but what is a, a major concern at this time? This, is, this season is quite, quite warm. And so not just the staple, you know, but the, your drinks. Um, you have to be concerned with your hydration because it's very warm these days and you have to, yes. to encourage you to use um, quite a lot of water. And, and as far as is possible, you, you um, control your, your sugary drinks. I have to say, because you can't tell somebody don't drink, don't drink, um, some persons will want to have a drink um, there. So you use a lot of water, but you control your, your sugary sugary drinks yeah that that's it that's important for but yeah. but more than that more than that it's not just um those items that we eat but ensuring that we have a healthy diet so in the the the, the um and the construction is a hard word but in the in the way you put your meal together you need to look at at the 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 those colorful vegetables because they assist you with with your healthy diet so even if I'm saying to you, you know, you use the salads. So your greens are important. Those green leafy vegetables, those are important. So in the salads, I, I just said, use your lettuce and so on. That's important. You know, um, we, we can use those purple looking ones. So we have um, purple cabbage. We have um, um, bygun um, and all those we use as part of the meal. So what, what you're doing is, is, um, designing or constructing a meal in such a way that you end up with a high, uh, a healthy, healthy diet. Right. Um, now, so those Dr. red Carson, ones, as we, as we are on the, the, the topic of the food, of course, there are going to be some people who prefer supplements. And so as we switch gears a bit, um, how do you think people can include supplements in their diet as well to ensure that they stay, stay healthy and should they include supplements or should we only get that, um, vitamins and minerals we need from the foods themselves? Well, there's al always a, a value placed on supplementation because um, you, even if you are having your, 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 your supplements from the fresh food, you can also supplement with, with your vitamins. You can do that for persons who are uh, some of the providers, they, they have supplements for persons in different age groups. Um, so you have um, supplements for persons between 50 and 60, between different ages you have for men and so on. And those assist you in, in ensuring that you build out a sort of um, a, a, a suitable um, dietary intake from, from day to day. That is indeed important to supplement yes. your diet. Yeah. And you Dr. Carrington, those with pre-existing uh, conditions, anything that they should in particular know um, as they decide to switch their diet? So, for example, those who are diabetic, those with high blood pressure, um, they may already be on, um, on, on pills, you know, to sort of control that sort of disease. And so if they want to switch now to a different diet, is it that they should go to their doctors first? Is there certain things you want to advise that they do as they decide to switch their diet during this Lenten season? Well, if you're diabetic, you ought to be on, on a suitable diet for, for diabetics, yes? So that what, you, what you're adjusting in the diet, it is the, the, the high protein that's, that some persons that, that are, you know, the animal protein. But you do have plant-based proteins that you can benefit from. Um, and you aren't, because, because with, with, with your, your condition, the pre-existing condition, you are already managing that. What we aren't saying to interfere with that, that area, we are saying for, for the, 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 the protein, the animal protein, you adjust to that. And some persons do not, if they've, they're very ill, they may be advised not to do so, um, but that you can benefit. I'm saying you have an option for plant-based protein. Yes. You just ensure that you do the com make the com combinations so that you, your dietary intake is intact. You don't compromise um, the fact that you're diabetic and you, you, you do such things that you aren't, um, that will that'll make you get more ill. In fact, most di di diabetic patients, they will have a counselor, uh, a nutrition nutritionist on board with them, and they will guide them in terms of what, what they should or should not do.
Yeah. And of course, when you are transitioning back to your regular, um, to your regular dietary habits, I mean, is it that, you know, after the, the 40 days, you can just, you know, go pick up chicken and eat it or, you know, start eating meat? Or is there a certain period that you need to allow yourself and your body to get back accustomed to eating meat or whatever it is you would have refrained from during that 40 day period? Um, I, I, I don't have data to support that um, during this 40 day period, if you abstain from meat, that you, you necessarily have to, to slowly usher it back in. Um, one, one from person to person, it may differ. But I don't have the data this time to say that for persons who have fasted, um, if you have to come back to normal eating, this is what you necessarily must do. Um, food encourages, encourages us to do a lot of things. Um, food, we feel very happy when we have a nice meal. Um, and of course, if you... If you denied yourself in this period, most people would say they benefit from it in such a way they feel um, very enriched, they feel um, energized having done so. But yet, um, when we, we are able to go back to a normal eating, you have the excitement of, I did not have um, meat for so-and-so time, and, and, and yes. this tastes so this is good, and, and so on. So that um, I think it is is a traditional um, um, experience that we shift from time to time, whatever happens, we adjust, we eat certain things um, during Christmas, we eat certain things during Easter, um, and during Lent we're saying that um, perhaps we can deny ourselves um, in this period of time, such that um, in, in, in later, <laughs> later time you feel, if, if, if it's a, for a health benefit, you do it, or if it is for, for whatever reason you do it, you get the satisfaction of knowing that um, your your body uh, would have benefited from it in so and so way. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. Well, Dr. Carantel, let me thank you for joining us on the Now Morning Show. Um, thank you so much for just giving us that outline, of course, of how we can organize our plates in terms of our proteins, the green veggies, the uh, purple veggies. And of course, we look to see, I'm hoping that you'll get the data soon in terms of if we need that transition period or if because we refrain from it, we love it so much, we just go back into it and everything is okay. So I know it's not going to be our last conversation, but I always appreciate your thoughts when you join us here on the Now Morning Show. So thank you so much for coming and sharing these tips with us. Thank you very much and thank you to, to TTT and to Trinidad and Tobago. Continue eating a healthy healthy plate. Look at your colors in the yes. selection of those items that you eat. Thank nice. you. Thanks again, Dr. Carrington. And that was health system specialist, Dr. Agatha Carrington, just sharing some tips on how we can stay healthy during the Lenten season as we refrain from certain foods and even drinks and beverages. You know, the Now Morning Show, we're going to take a break and be right back. Stay with us. To hide the food he was eating, she trying to hide it quick. I snatch up a fat broomstick.